Welcome to uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church, our third Sunday after Pen Pentecost worship. Um, it certainly is a, a very warm, it's been a very, very warm week. When I was growing up, people would say, uh, is it hot enough for you? I haven't really heard anybody say that recently. <laughs> uh, God did not promise the path of the disciple would be easy. Jeremiah feels the pain of rejection from those who do not want to hear what he has to say. Jesus declares that his words may bring stark division. Even so, we need not be afraid, for God accounts for each hair on our heads. Though we may experience rejection, frustration, division, and death, God's grace and love make us a new creation each day. Marked with a cross and filled with holy food, we are sent from worship to witness to Christ in the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of the Holy Spirit that we confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God. Have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and have given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, that we have done the things, for the things that we have done and the things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of god and for the unity of all let us pray to the lord For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Teach us, good, good Lord, Lord God, to serve you as you, you deserve, to, to give and not, not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we will do your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God speaks to us in scripture, preaching, and song. The first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20. Jeremiah accuses God of forcing him into a ministry that brings him only contempt and persecution. Yet Jeremiah is confident that God will be a strong protector against his enemies and commits his life into God's hands. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shunned, for they are shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 69. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. Surely, for your sake, 
I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have, I have become, become a stranger, stranger to my, my own kindred, an and alien to my, my mother's, mother's children. children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those, Those who sit, sit by the gate, gate murmur against, against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save, Save me from, from the mire. Do not, not let me sing. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw, Draw near to me and redeem me, because, because of my enemies, enemies deliver, deliver me. me. The second reading this morning is from Romans chapter 6. In baptism, we were incorporated into the reality of Christ's death and resurrection. We have been made new in Christ through his death and resurrection to live freed from sin. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make a defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God, he was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus warns his disciples their ministry in his name will meet with opposition. However, he assures them that they need not fear 
for the truth will come to light. Life is found in Christ. Jesus said to the twelve, a disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the night, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet none of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And yet even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more of more value than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my father in heaven. Do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're at a point in history where we are focusing on racism for all that's going on. And we have now, we're looking at the, the demonstrations, we're looking at all of the all the things going on. And as disciples of Christ, it's important that we learn to practice anti-racism. So I want to tell you about Clarence Jordan, a white man in Georgia. I know if I'm talking about racism, you might say, well, I talk about a black hero like Martin Luther King Jr. And because he followed his call to discipleship, as was discussed in today's gospel, but I am focusing on Clarence to demonstrate the kind of things we, as not a person of color, can do for the people of color. Clarence understood taking up the cross meant the disciples' allegiance and identity are in Jesus. That is, with the humiliation, suffering, shame, opposition, and death that Jesus continually speaks about. You see, Clarence Jordan lived in a community where, where blacks and poor sharecroppers were at a disadvantage to the landowners. The sharecropper may give, for example, 50% of what, was the, what was, they harvested with the end landowner setting the rules and giving them leverage and a financial advantage. When in college, Clarence clearly saw the injustice against the oppressed and was disturbed by the unfairness and all. So to help the sharecroppers, he went to the University of Georgia where he earned a degree in 1933 in agriculture and learned more efficient ways of farming, specifically to help others. Clarence could also see a spiritual connection. So he went ahead and went on and got a Master of Divinity at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary where he also earned a PhD in New Testament. Then Clarence and a friend founded the Koi Nonaya Farm in Americus, Georgia in 1942. They endured opposition for the sake of the gospel. They experienced hostility and violence because they welcomed and shared with anyone and everyone, regardless of race, religion, no religion, background, sexual identity, or anything else that divides people. And as an intentional 
Christian community of believers. They shared their lives and resources. Following the example of the first Christian communities as described in the Acts of the Apostles. Their commitment to racial equality, pacifism, and economic sharing brought bullets, bombs, and a boycott in the 50s as the KKK and others attempted to force them out. For example, when the Konaniya community tried selling peanuts from a roadside stand, the Ku Klux Klan blew it up with dynamite. And of course, with Clarence Johnson, he was emboldened by the gospel, and he didn't get up, he put up another stand. It got blown up too. Finally, the farm resorted to mail order ads with Clarence's patented sense of humor. The ad says, help us ship the nuts out of Georgia. We see they responded with prayer, nonviolent resistance, and a renewed commitment to live the gospel. The farm continues to this day with mail order business to help sustain them. When peace settled in the farm, they also launched the partnership housing movement to deal with poor housing, which became Habitat for Humanity and the birthing of many, many other projects. We too are called to take up the cross. This is difficult because we are used to pursuing comfort, not discomfort. And as we see, there can be discomfort when we follow Jesus. We have fear, but Jesus tells us, do not fear. As disciples of Christ, St. Paul will be talking about our legion and identity with Christ. Um, there's going to be characteristic of a uh, uh, later date of a white supremacy culture. What we can do, we can create a culture of appreciation and publicly express gratitude for people's work and contributions. We can choose integrity and actively refuse to participate in gossip. We can fo foster a culture of learning where mistakes are learned as learning opportunities. Understand defensive is linked to fear of losing power, face, privilege, comfort. Identify other things already in place within the organization and seek ways to highlight and build upon them. So the way to start out with this is to start with education, to look at things from the lens of history. And in the context of our loyalty and allegiance to Christ, we'll continue talking about love and continue to talk about relationships. So for the rest, stay tuned. The hymn of the day is Children of the Heavenly Father. Children of the Heavenly Father, safely in His bosom gather, nestling bird nor star in heaven, such a refuge there was given. God His own doth tend and nourish in His holy they flourish from all evil things he spares them in his mighty arms he bears them neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord his children sever unto them his grace he shows the loving purpose solely to preserve them pure and holy. Let us share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that the life, that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. We pray especially for Beth and Ryan, Jonathan, Noah, Irene, and Alex. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, heal those who are sick and in need of you this day. We pray for those who we silently lift before you now. Also, for Bev, Charles, Cindy, Gary, Jane, Jeff, John, Chris, Lynn, Marge, Mary, Roger, and Bev, Shani, and Ezra, Stacy, and Char. Char, and Cindy. Also, we wish to lift up recent graduates. This has been, a, for, for these people, it's been an unusual year because, because of social distancing but we remembered their hard work and their accomplishments. Lauren Croyer, who graduated from DeWitt High School. Catherine Kitts from MSU. A Tara McGrath, who graduated from Ocean View. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We raise up leaders for your church who will tend to your harvest. We especially lift up to you, presiding Bishop Elizabeth, our Synod Bishop Craig, and Pastor Carl. We ask that you be with their rep respective staffs as they live out their calling to serve. As we are called to be one, even as Jesus and the Father are one. Be with the leaders and the congregation of Hope Lutheran Church in Rockford. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.